I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. Today, we're going to be doing a little bit of looking at how you can go out and get exercise outdoors, walking around in a city here in Nicaragua, like Leon. I specifically live in Leon, so we're going to look at that city. I'm not going to go traveling all over the country just to show you some outdoor walking opportunities, but it's a good time uh, to look at them because we have a viewer letter that we're going to uh, read and uh, see his feedback after some time living in Nicaragua. He was here recently uh, doing some investigation as to whether or not this was a place he may want to uh, expatriate to, to move to. Uh, and uh, so we're going to dig into his experience and see if we have some feedback, how maybe he could have done it differently, what may have been useful for him and learn from that. And we're going to do uh, some seeking out some stuff here in Leon. So we're going to get to that right after the bump. All right, I'm going to do my best to read this letter. It's a little bit hard for me because my eyes are old and I'm on my iPhone. I am getting an iPad, but I don't know when. I have to get to the United States uh, to do my purchasing, so it'll be a little bit. Let's give it a start. This is from Mike, uh, who wrote this a couple days ago, and this is uh, to give some context. We had given uh, two videos recently where people had come to Nicaragua and actually moved. Now, Mike is going to be talking about an attempt at doing a scouting mission, which is totally different. Scouting missions, you assume, well, you assume you're going to do some research and then, you know, maybe get it right, maybe get it wrong, but you're coming because you don't know yet, right? But the two that had failed, they actually moved and then discovered that their scouting had been non-existent. Um, so, so it's a completely different thing. So he's responding to these two videos where we did kind of a post-mortem on some folks. Uh, one was a single guy and the other was a family of 10 who had moved to Nicaragua sight unseen, did no research, and found it to be absolutely not what they were looking for, and they were not prepared for it in any way. They weren't prepared for any relocation in any way, uh, essentially immediately. So he says, uh, interesting story, but it seems like those people were not really serious about relocating to the country. You think? <laughs> I appreciate your passionate approach to help people to relocate to Nicaragua. I did travel a lot all over the world. I lived in Mexico in different states over 10 years. I smiled watching your video about your discovery of Mazatlan, Sinaloa, which I lived in back in the 1990s. I knew the owner of the Hotel Machado where you stayed. I stayed on the Plaza Machado, which is right in the middle of the old town. Go check out for sure. Go check out my Mazatlan episodes. If you at all like my walking tours places, I got three walking tours. Uh, in Mazatlan that are already posted and I think they're pretty fantastic like I really like the walks that we did as far as like just walking around different towns and cities those I think turned out really well and they haven't been really popular because people are looking for Nicaragua content on my channel but Mazatlan's really cool so if you could go watch those um uh, the country I never visited was Nicaragua. I'm a retired now and looking for a place to settle down. As I'm fluent in several languages and Spanish is one of them, Latin America countries have always been on my list. I came to Nicaragua at the end of April this year. So important to note, April, while it's not technically the hottest month, that's like now, uh, April feels the hottest. It has the least wind movement. So especially here on the coast, April's kind of brutal. It's the one month we always recommend not to come to Nicaragua because it's just... We have 11 beautiful months of the year and one month that we all don't like, and it's April. So we generally say, you know, even though April is a very slow month, so you don't have a lot of tourists, there's no activities and, and people just hide inside. So it's the, it's the one month we all agree we don't like. So as, as expats here, it's the one month we always talk about as that's our month away. If anyone's going to, if you're going, like, it's not a big deal. It's just a little bit warmer, a little bit less pleasant, but if we're ever going to like take some time and, and go spend a little bit of time in another country, like go to Guatemala for a little bit, April's the logical time to do it because nothing's going on here. Everything is closed. Everyone's hiding inside. Everybody's tired. It's after Semana Santa. Okay. So he came to April end of this year, settled down in uh, Matagalpa for two weeks and visited several towns such as Esteli, Hinotega, San Rafael del Norte. Uh, that last one is not a city, it's a small village in the area, uh, but it's one of the beautiful northern towns. I think it may be the coldest average temperatures of a village. In it has some claim to fame beyond being a beautiful place to go check out. Then I came to the city of Leon and stayed there for two and a half months. This is where I may disagree with you, sir. The, you suggest people come to a new country to scout for a few days, maybe a couple of weeks. Just to be clear, I suggest people come scout a minimum of a few days or a few weeks. I'm not saying that that's the amount you should plan for. I'm saying don't plan for less than that, just, just to be clear. Well, don't be offended, but my advice would be to use all the time allowed by immigration authority time. I, I'm not offended. I would totally agree. You should, uh, unless... The only thing I would say is a lot of people can rule a place out in a few days, so consider 
uh, pre-scouting, right? Like, um, for example, uh, if you're looking at Nicaragua, look at a time where the flights are cheap. You could come down for a week and gauge, right? Oh, this is a place I would never consider. Just rule it out, and then you don't have to do an extensive scouting trip. Save that time for because you can only do so many extensive scouting trips in a lifetime, right? Now, but as he's describing, when we did our scouting trips, we fully moved. Like, we didn't keep a home anywhere. We fully moved to country after country. And we did it based on full visa limits. So we did exactly what he's describing. That is what I did. I'm not just telling you that you should do that. I'm not just saying that he's right that you should do that. I did this, right? So totally on board. Uh, my personal experience. Uh, first month, I loved everything. Second month, I have started to have some doubts. And my third month living there, I was counting days when I could finally get the hell out of there. What I liked about the country of Nicaragua, one, people. I love Nicaraguan people, nicest people on earth, made lots of friends, will miss those people. Two, security, very safe. I would say one of the safest countries in the world. It's probably not that extreme, but it's pretty safe. It's definitely the safest in the region, except for maybe El Salvador. Like it's, it is safe, but safest in the world. I mean, when you start going to places like Switzerland, it, it is, it is just safer. Like it just is. Uh, cheap, super affordable public transportation. That is very true. The public transportation is ridiculously cheap, even compared to Nicaraguan prices for other things. Uh, affordable housing options, but with questionable amenities. That's that's decently true. Um, the thing I would say is in mo most of those cases, the questionable amenities can normally be easily overcome uh, because of the affordable housing. One of the reasons that uh, housing is super affordable in Nicaragua is that it doesn't have those amenities, but they're really easy to add. So for example, I have an apartment here in the general area. It did not come with air conditioning or fans or anything like that. That is crazy affordable. It's a double gated, beautiful, uh, super safe, great neighborhood, highly desirable, good use of space. Like it's actually, it's an apartment, but it's bigger than the average two bedroom house. It's a two bedroom apartment, um, but it didn't have air conditioning and it was gonna be kind of miserable. But so we added air conditioning, which was a minimum cost. And the savings that we have by having a cheaper apartment makes it really trivial to add the air conditioning. So, you know, those kinds of things. And like, did it come with a TV or internet? No, but I didn't want it to. Well, it would have been nice if it came with a TV because I didn't want to buy one. But the internet, I specifically want to have high speed uh, synchronous fiber. Uh, and so we paid for that ourselves. And it's, it's the perfect combination. So it is, he's right. The amenities tend to be very lean, but that's what keeps the price really, really low. And gives you the flexibility to put in the amenities that make sense for you. Um, I think very rarely are you going to have a problem where there's a, a, an unavailability of amenities, right? Whatever you're looking at in other countries, you can get that here. It's just you have to go about it a different way. Now, if you're here for super short term, of course, that can be a problem. You're here for one month, you can't solve those problems, but you're actually going to move here. It's easy to evaluate. Oh, this doesn't come with AC, but of course, if I was going to stay here a year, I just put it in. Um, number five, cheap tropical fruits for sure. Six, inexpensive private dental care. $15 per filling I had with first class equipment in a private dental office. Dentistry is especially good in Nicaragua. Like I've never had any people rave about dentistry the way that they rave about Nicaraguan. And I know people who go all over the world for dentistry. This is the leader for some reason. Uh, number seven, good local beer. Number eight, beautiful nature, lakes, great surf on the ocean, exotic women, beautiful colonial cities. What I didn't like and why I left and why I can't live in Nicaragua. One, heat. Okay, so before I get into this, I just want, I, I double checked this because I wanted to be sure. Nicaragua is the hottest country in the Western Hemisphere that's not an island, right? And it's hotter than most of the islands, but there's a few that are not. We're number one. This is as hot as it gets. Within Nicaragua, the hottest region is Nicaragua Occidental, the west. Now, it's true that the hottest city is Chinandega, but Leon is a close second. It is hot, hot, hot. Now, remember, we're mild temperatures here, meaning we don't have a lot of fluctuations. So while our average is hot, we don't have cold days and we don't have crazy hot days. We have just regular warm. Right now, we're in the warmest part of the year. We may not be the warmest week, but we're in the general vicinity and we're only in the 80s. So if you're coming from places that are much colder, yeah, the 80s are suddenly a shock and they feel really warm, but 80 something degrees every day is not hot by normal standards. As an American, I can't call an 80 degree day hot. Hot is in the 90s and up. Even coming from New York, the 80s are really warm days. Our summers were typically in the 70s, but all that has changed. And now New York and like quite often, my father's place in upstate New York is warmer than here, like all the time. And uh, where we have lived in Europe is all warmer than here, like half the year. 
So it's, it's a very different mix. Uh, so while Nicaragua has the highest average temperature, it also has one of the mildest uh, sets of weather. So it's misleading to look only at the heat, but it is important to say, if heat is something, if the 80s are something that you struggle with, then being in Nicaragua is probably gonna be problematic but putting in time in Occidental, Leon, or Chinandega, or their areas around them, is not gonna make very much sense. And especially if you're in those areas, you're gonna to want to avoid things like the city center, because it's much warmer than the area around it. The cities just hold heat, just naturally, right? Concrete and all that. So one of the reasons that we live in Tutiava here, and you see my videos, I have a lot of yard and garden, it makes a huge difference in keeping you cool. We are many degrees, like truly many degrees, cooler than the city just a few blocks away. I live right outside the city, but when I lived downtown, it was noticeably much warmer than here. So if you're gonna look at Nicaragua and you're not looking for the super, some people just love the heat. So perfect, then Trinidad and Leona, your places. Some people just don't care. Fine, evaluate them, right? I fall into this category. I definitely prefer Ireland, right? I like cold weather. I like jeans and heavy boots and a fleece and a hat, obviously. That's how I like to live. But because it's mild here, I'm fine putting up with the heat, but not everyone is. So, and then remember, it is not, is you can't even say you've evaluated heat. As Mike was saying, you gotta give places a few months. When it comes to evaluating heat, you must give it six months minimum or it is impossible that you've evaluated it because it takes six months for your body to adjust to any new weather situation. Now, if you're in a place that fluctuates, you'll never adjust, right? That's one of the reasons I hate New York. Super hot summers, super cold winters. Everything is terrible, always. It doesn't matter what it is, it's always terrible because your body never has a chance to adjust. Here, because it's hot all the time, but not crazy hot, you're able to adjust. And everyone I know who lives here long-term is suddenly like, oh yeah, it's not a big deal. Everyone who visits and doesn't give it the six months, thinks it's super hot, but we've been through this a lot on the video. You have to do six months, and this is just biology. Your body doesn't have time to change the blood because it literally changes your blood to accommodate the change in temperatures. Same thing happens if you're gonna live at altitude, you have to give it a similar amount of time for the uh, oxygen carrying capability of your blood to adjust to your new place. So just things you have to do in order to do that evaluation or simply look at the numbers and say, wait, I know that an average temperature of 79 is quite warm because that's about what Nicaragua is. And that is going to be, you know, something I can adjust to or something I can't adjust to and just work from that, right? So we knew that given time we would adjust to Nicaragua and it would be fine. And it was, and now we actually really enjoy the heat. And when we go other places, we're cold. I'm gonna be in Argentina soon and it's going to be very cold for us, right? But I'd prefer to live in the heat and sometimes be cold than live in the cold. And then when I travel, be unbearable in the heat. Just me, I would prefer that. So this works out pretty well for me. I like adjusting to the heat every day because it makes doing uh, other things in life um, easier. Um, but depending on your mix of things, if it's the only place you're ever gonna live and you don't travel a lot, then that makes no sense for you. So it all depends on you. He says, the heat is terrible. Well, Scott, you may live 24 seven with air on. So just to be clear, I basically only use air conditioning in my office and I keep it set to 80 um, and I have studio lights on me. Now, okay, when I'm doing the live stream, I do turn it down. I, I talk about this on the live stream. There's so many lights, there's so much going on and I cannot risk like sweating on camera in the house. Like it just, it would get uncomfortable. So at one moment I turn the, the, the temperature down, but I generally keep my office at about 80 degrees Fahrenheit um, and I do it because I have to avoid dust and sound in the office because I'm working, I'm on the phone, um, I'm doing editing, I have to listen to the show. And sometimes like now I'm in the office and I'm recording and if I had the windows open, I'd have dust blowing in and really loud sounds all the time and it would be a problem. So I can't uh, do that because of all my equipment, I have to have AC, but I don't need it for me. And when I first lived here, I did work with without AC. I, I didn't have AC when I first moved here. I had the windows open, had the door open and it was really nice except for a little period in the afternoon, it would get a little bit because the sun comes straight into my office, but the dust was a major problem. And so we had to do something about it. And I wasn't doing as many videos back then. So I didn't have to worry about that. Now, now I am, and it's just a constant thing. So I am stuck with air conditioning in here most of the time, but even now I still will often, uh, if I'm, if I'm in any way in and out, I will just turn off the AC and not worry about it. I prefer not to have the AC. 
Um, I just I just like being in the fresh air. So I, I definitely don't live with AC 24-7. I spend a huge amount of time um, outdoors. All of our morning meet, all of our meetings here are outside. Um, anytime we go to restaurants or outside, I film, you see me filming outside all the time. Like I'm outside a lot and not just outside. I'm outside in the sun. I'm outside in the heat. I've got a hat on. I'm animated and doing things. Um, I am not worried about the heat very much. I go out for walks. Yesterday, I took someone to the beach to go look at properties and while he was coming to get me, I just went out and started walking down the highway, right? Fully dressed normally, not like in sports gear, not doing anything to stay cold. It was the heat of the day, right? Top of the day, uh, as far as heat goes, out in the sun, totally exposed on the highway, right in Leon, hottest part of the country, just walking on the highway, waiting for him to pick me up, right? No problem with the heat at all. Do I sweat sometimes? Absolutely. You guys see it, right? You're going, you're to the tropics, right? So you have to have a certain expectation. This is the tropics. And this is the hottest country of the tropics. We're hotter than Panama, we're hotter than Venezuela, we're even hotter than Cuba, right? So, so gauge that appropriately, but it really isn't that bad. And very, very few people that I know that live here are in AC very much. We really, only those of us who have offices and are working like normal jobs, where you would have AC anywhere. I'd have to have AC in Texas, I'd have to have AC in New York, right, under those circumstances. So. That's the only time that I really use AC. Uh, sometimes I use AC when I sleep, quite often just because I don't want to open windows or whatever, but I only cool it to like 80. And I'll easily sleep without the AC on here in Leon. If I'm not in Leon, if I'm in like Managua, I never have AC, never. Like that's how it's that much cooler, which is not that much. It's just enough that I don't need AC and I don't use a fan. And But even when I'm here, I don't use a fan. I don't have an easy accessible fan. Like I can obviously get to a fan when I need it, but I don't have one in my office. I don't have one around the house. Um, if we had no AC at all, yeah, we would have more fans. Uh, we do have ceiling fans, but not in the room that I sleep in. And I don't worry about it, right? I do not need a fan or AC to sleep. And uh, most of it when we're outside, we don't have fans, right? So, so all of this, like, I know people imagine that I'm living with all this AC and I'm doing all these things to make it cool. At my kids, yes, my kids stay in AC all day. My wife tends to stay in AC all day, but I do not. Um, and I'm out doing things. Like it really isn't like that. Um, I'm sure there are millions of people who would be okay living with AC or a fan being turned on day uh, on day and night all year round. I'm not one of those people lying on my bed, looking at that fan over my head, running with that noise and imagining that this torture never stops. That fan is going to run all night, all day, next night, next day, and all year round and the rest of my life. No, I'm not bo born for that kind of torture. Absolutely. That's why you wait the six months and see if you adjust. Like it's, I wouldn't want that either. And I don't, which is why I've made efforts to not hide in air conditioning, not hide with fans. When I first got here, I was using fans all the time, right? So I totally understand. It was, I remember that first year, watch my videos, 2021, we were hot. I would sit out on the beach, which is a little bit cooler than the city, but not as cool as Sutiava. And you'd have a little bit of breeze off the ocean, but it wouldn't be enough. And you'd have a fan right next to your head. You'd be like, oh, but it only took six to nine months. And suddenly we're going out to restaurants in Leon. We don't even care where we're sitting. There's never, I never think about the heat going out in Leon ever. But in those first six months, it was all you could think about. And so it, like, I can't stress enough that the, you cannot test until you give it that time. And it is life changing. I'm not saying that it's for everyone. I'm not saying that that's something you want to do. I'm saying that if you want to gauge the heat, it is the only way to do it because this gave a completely false impression. He feels like we all need AC. He feels like we all need fans. But those of us that live here, yeah, there's going to be days where it's just crazy hot. We have peak days where we're dying and we're like, you know what? I'm hiding from the heat. But there's things you can do, the fans, the AC, or take a trip, right? So there's, there's a lot of options. Um, and remember, uh, and this is, I'm a little bit confused, Mike, because why did you, so knowing that you don't want a fan or AC, why are you in Leon of all the places in Nicaragua? Nicaragua itself is a stretch uh, to, to want to evaluate if temperature is that much of a concern and you didn't want to give it the six months to actually evaluate it. But why leave the highlands? It's guaranteed that the highlands are the only place that might work out for you. Leon would be the worst, other than Chinadega, which no one goes to, is a worst case scenario. So, uh, and I think we're gonna see that he stayed in El Centro, which is much warmer than the rest of Leon. Why? W this should have been uh, something that you could rule out, right? I'm not saying that, that your experience is wrong. I'm saying that um, this is a great example of where uh, doing research ahead of time 
you can determine that, you know, for example, right now it's about 83 degrees outside. Is 83 something you can live with being your outside temperature during the day? Can you handle nighttime only getting down to like 77 degrees? Some people are like, that sounds like heaven. Other people are like, I would die. I could never adjust to that. That's something that you should, in theory, be able to look up ahead of time uh, and determine for you, do you need AC and a fan at those temperatures? I don't, um, but a lot of people do. But I grew up in New York. Like, I'm a big guy, and I grew up in New York, and I'm covered in beard, and I wear a hat, and so I'm, I take the heat a lot hotter than a lot of people, um, and I'm fine. Right. So growing up, I was always the person who was most sensitive to the heat of anyone in my class, anyone in my family, and that I find it really comfortable here. I'm always shocked to find that there are people who find it less, who are less adaptable than me because it was such a hard thing for me to adapt to. Uh, number two, the weather in general, hot, so hot that you can't wear cotton t-shirts. Cotton gets wet and sticks to your body. Your body sweats, your body sweats as hell and gets irritated. Don't wear cotton, only acrylic and at least one size up. It's a little bit strange because we all try to wear cotton here. Um, that's that's like our, our go-to fabric for most things. I'm not sure uh, why why that's a concern, um, but definitely the heat is really uh, impacting Mike in this case. Number three, I'm a daytime person. Um, I'm kind of. Uh, I like to walk during the daytime in parks. Me too. Uh, sit on the bench and read a book. I like to sit at the table in outside cafes with a cup of coffee and watch people walking. Okay, so the first part here um, is, is super accessible in, uh, in Nicaragua, but the second part, the cup of coffee and watch people walking from cafes, very difficult. Uh, there aren't a ton of people walking around, so this is important to understand from a cultural perspective, that the culture of Nicaragua is not to go out and walk around because most people are out doing physical activities as a matter of their uh, their job, their, their necessary daily life, running errands. So people don't have a tendency to see walking as a uh, entertainment or exercise activity because they're getting that other places um, naturally. They're walking, but not walking for pleasure. Uh, Nicaraguans tend to go to gyms all the time, so that does happen. They get exercise, uh, but it's a different thing than walking. Walking you tend to get because you're running errands between houses. Like you see people running from school to home and home to the pulpery and stuff all the time. So people are walking, but they're not lifting heavy weights, so that's why they go to the gym. Make sense? Um, it's, it's noticeable. One of my favorite things, like in Europe, is sitting at cafes. Uh, not reading a book, but I like to sit at cafes, um, keep up on things, you know, I'll take my laptop or soon iPad and do a little bit of work and just keep up with the office and love to watch things. I totally, like, Mike sounds a lot like me, like really, really close. Um, and there just, there isn't the stuff to watch. Are there cafes? A few. Here in Leon, definitely, again, Leon doesn't have cafes. I mean, we got Dr. Coffee, they're great, but it's inside. You're sitting in a courtyard, right? Colonial city. So if being able to sit outside and see people is something you want, colonial cities, Leon and Granada and Acatal, should be, again, ruled out. So Leon, because of the heat, and maybe Granada, Personally, I found Granada hotter than Leon because of the lack of wind. Uh, but all those colonial cities should be ruled out because they won't meet this need, even if they had cafes. Maybe in Granada, uh, Casa del Cafe on the square does have some people watching, but it's the only one. Uh, here, there's a couple nice cafes, but none have good views of people. So, yeah. Uh, but Madagalpa definitely has those cafes. They have a ton of them, and you can watch people walking around the park because they have cafes in the middle of the city, and you can sit outside, and they have views, and the temperatures are lower. So there's a lot more of that stuff going on. So it does exist, but not in Leon. So again, this one makes me ask, why Why were you in Leon at all? Like, I, I'm missing something. What drove you to test Leon other than like a weekend? Like, yeah, come check it out. But why put in so much time in the place that all the things you want were known ahead of time not to not to be there. Uh, due to the heat, I was only able to leave my place from 5 to 9 in the morning and after 6 p.m. Um, I Essentially, every moment that you guys see me outside is in between those times. So I don't know what to say. Like, I go out in the heat all the time, and I wonder what people are, uh, are, are confused about. It's hot, right? That's the hottest part of the day. But once you're used to it, like, there's everyone's out at those times. Um, I mean, people go to work and like the whole the whole day takes place uh, during those times. All right, we're back. Number four, sport. 
I'm used to going to the neighborhood park to jog to do my morning exercise using public sport facilities. It's not possible in Lyon and other cities of the country. Here you have an option to walk down a three foot wide sidewalk with electric poles in the middle of it or take a chance to share the road with cars and motorcycles. Regarding recreational parks as we know it, they don't exist here. Hey guys, I want to bring you out and show you some of the places that you could come and go walking depending on what you're looking for here in uh, Leon. So we're starting just because I had to be here anyway uh, at the park in Fatima. So a lot of neighborhoods have their own parks. This one's very overgrown because of the rainy season. They don't have the crews to keep up with a lot of stuff, but it's generally a very nice park in a beautiful area. And you can see like beautiful houses across the street, nice sidewalks. So you could go walking on the village city streets here, no problem. We're in Leon, but it's a, it's a Rapardo. But this one specifically is built with a uh, relatively well-maintained, still not great, like sidewalks are always a little bit uneven in Nicaragua, but it has a sidewalk that goes all the way around the park. And it's great for people who are going out, going for a walk or whatever. It's, uh, it's pretty decent. But if you don't wanna do the sidewalk walk around the outside, which you absolutely can do, we're gonna hop over and I'm actually going to spin the camera around right where we're standing and show you what we have. All right. Yes, you guessed it. This is a jogging path that goes around the park. Now, like I said, the park's not being well maintained. Like it's normally nice. I'm not sure why it's this bad, but we've had a lot of rain. So stuff grows up fast, but we've got trash cans. You got places for the kids to play. And uh, I've been out here a bit where they actually are doing things. This is a little bit on the early side in the morning. You wouldn't expect too many people to be out, although we have a crowd hanging out here. Buenos dias. But if you're looking and pay attention, the sidewalks across the street, they don't go all the way to the corner in all cases, but we've got pretty decent sidewalks in a lot of spaces. And, uh, but this is a nice, broad, smooth path and this, this is just i'm waiting for my daughter while she's uh seeing the doctor and just showing this off so you can see the regular sidewalk right it's perfectly fine and this jogging path is great so you can be out here and go running and not worry about interrupting people this is a popular spot to be doing that kind of stuff and notice how beautiful the sidewalk is over there we're gonna pop over there in a minute and uh nice murals here other than needing to be picked up and mowed, I do wish they would fix this fence or remove this fence. There's no reason for a fence here because this is not enclosed. And they're selling snacks. So if you're out jogging, you can get a snack. And so you can see the nice streets, beautiful houses. This is actually a really nice place to jog because it's incredibly safe and they have a dedicated jogging path and nice views and there are a couple restaurants and shops nearby. It's not a lot, but and here we are coming around. And there's some old playground equipment. So, yeah, there's definitely some options. It really is accessible to find places like this. You just have to be looking around the city. Now, of course, in El Centro, you're not going to find them because it's the old colonial center in the city. They can't build anything like this. There just isn't any space for it. But of course, Central Park is there and people walk around Central Park. There's uh, um, pedestrian ways all around the park. So you have several blocks in each direction and they're expanding this currently to make downtown more pedestrian. So going for a jog or something, not gonna be very good for that. But going for a walk around a large area where you just walk down the middle of the street and there can't be any traffic because you're on pedestrian ways. There's a lot of that downtown, which we're not gonna go show you, but you can look on a map and see where the cathedral is. All the roads by the cathedral, this, the central park in front of the cathedral, and several of the radiating roads and an increasing number are pedestrian. And so that whole area is absolutely perfect if what you're looking for is a place to go for a walk in El Centro. But outside of El Centro, in the barrios and repartos, you're gonna find parks with jogging paths, no problem. I'm not a runner by any stretch of the imagination, but I do want to point out that there's this beautiful park right here in the city of Leon, actually in the city. I'm right in front of Ruben Dario. The statue is right over here. The park's right over here. We're right at the, the uh, main cemetery. 
very accessible spot and anyone is welcome to come out here nearly anytime and use this massive jogging track or use the field uh, for whatever you like. It's just a great example of how available there are tracks and outdoor activity spaces for the public here in Leon. You can come anywhere in the city and most of the barrios are going to have something similar or exactly what they're going to have will vary. Not every neighborhood is going to have outdoor areas. This is actually in Fundesi, so pretty close to the middle of the city on the southeast side, uh, but it's right as you come in, but out on the west, in the north, in the northeast, and remember, Leon's kind of a triangle, so you don't, you don't get things in every direction. But there's a number of these available and there's a lot of neighborhoods that I'm just not familiar with that easily have spaces like this or different types of parks that uh, I just I would have to really seek them out. Plus there's basketball courts you can see kind of over here and if you look at my video from the other day where we went to the Reparto William Fonseca in the north of the city they had some uh, park areas that I walked through. Now of course they're not fancy it's just dirt tracks or possibly gravel tracks, sometimes grass tracks, uh, but there's normally fields you can run around, places where you can play baseball, soccer, kickball, whatever. Uh, these spaces do exist. This is a baseball area over here. There's actually kids playing baseball over here right now and another baseball game over here. Plus there's, I believe, soccer or baseball fields this direction, but I'm not really, not really familiar with what they have over there. I guess might as well walk a little bit. Could be anything but this is an entire sports area. It's just open for people to come down. Technically, technically, uh, I believe it's part of Unan, but uh, wide open, you can come here anytime. And especially if you're coming down in the morning or something, you know, you're gonna have it to yourself for sure. Oh, I think these are the practice grounds. I think this is where they actually play the real baseball games. So it's a little bit fancier. I don't know if they, well, it's wide open. You could use that too. It's actually quite a bit of space. And plus, if you want to go running on streets or anything, there's so many open areas of the city. As long as you're not in El Centro or in the, the, the deep barrios like Guadalupe, La Borrio, then you're going to have a lot of access to space. There you go. Another baseball field there. And uh, that is uh, the, the road actually coming into the city. Uh, from Managua right there. So this is very visible, uh, very, so easy to park. There's so much parking. If you wanted to drive down from somewhere or the city buses come here, or, you know, I walk here from the far sides of the city. I understand I walk farther than most people. So it's a little bit different, but uh, it is, it is something you can do pretty easily and get wherever. I do need to point out though that Mike was like, it's so hot. And I'm like, you know, it's not really all that hot all that often. We're actually, I think on the day that I ran out to do this, I've had that video ready for a while, but I didn't do this part of it. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's the hottest day of the year. So we're at like 94. So that's legitimately hot and we're humid today. We're not normally humid, but today is hot and humid. So we're only 94, but our feels like number is 102. Honestly, it doesn't feel like 102. I don't want to go jogging on a day like this, but going out for a walk today is really nice. I, I mean, it's warm. I'm, I'm not saying it's not warm, but at, at 94, 95 degrees, this feels, this feels really nice outside. If I wasn't out running and stuff, if I was in shade, then this would be really nice. So, but I mean, even out in the sun, this is a, uh, it's not as bad as it seems. Seriously, once you get used to living in, in the 80s or, or super low 90s, then these hot days in the mid 90s, you know, you just think of them as a warm day, but it's not crippling. Now, if you're doing outside work, I totally understand. That's unbearably hot. But even taking long walks in the sun, it's quite nice. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, his description of the sidewalks sounds like El Centro. That is not what most of Leon is like. Um, you've seen, like, go watch my videos of Fatima. Their sidewalks look like the United States. Hey guys, I'm glad you're here. This gives me a chance to show you what some of the sidewalks are like here in the city of Leon. I'm in the uh, Reparto of Fatima, and this area has some really nice sidewalks. Depends where you are in the city and what you're looking for. The old Colonial Center, not gonna have good sidewalks. Like Mike tells you, 
they're awful. Pulls in the middle, uneven, broken stuff everywhere. But in the nicer Rapardos, you've got some beautiful sidewalks anywhere in the country. Even out in the country, like way out in rural areas, you can find some nice sidewalks. So it depends what you're looking for. But if it's something you need, you can certainly find it. Yeah, like you, if you go to the, the old colonial centers, again, colonial city, they don't have the spots for those things. It can't be in El Centro. So if you wanted to evaluate Leon for the things that you're looking for, the best cafes, they're not in El Centro. They're not even in the, the neighboring barrios. They're farther out. Uh, the sidewalks, they get better the farther out you go. But just getting the moment you're out of El Centro, they're not too bad. I mean, they're uneven for sure. Um, and out here where I live, like we have decent sidewalks and people jogging down the road. Like, yeah, you're taking your chances. But if you do it during daylight, like it's super safe. There's not a ton of traffic. Make sure you're on the correct side of the road for jogging. And it's, I walk on the road all the time. There's, there's definitely no concern. Um, now, if I was in El Centro, of course, right? So, but because of the heat, you wouldn't consider El Centro, right? And uh, because like all the things are saying that both Leon and the center of, the, of any city are not the things you should be looking at. So I wonder <laughs> why, what drove you to evaluate all these places, um, but as far as places to walk and and parks and stuff, I, I'm a little bit confused because um, I I mean I'm not saying that the accessibility is as good as in the United States necessarily, but um, I, I think the things that you want to do uh, is is very accessible, and um, I'm not going to go show it on this video, but uh, there are places in the country now. These are more out of the way places. Uh, they have the outdoor like in Europe. When I lived in Spain, we had this amazing. Uh, I lived right next to La Jaron and in. in in Andalusia, and um, Lan Jaron had this beautiful public park with all the exercise equipment outside because it's Spain and it only gets to the 100 degrees a few days a year, so you're able to go out and exercise outdoors quite a lot. And same thing in Nicaragua. The outdoors are so pleasant all the time. You can basically use things outdoors all the time. So in the, uh, uh, on, the on the new road heading to Carrasso, there are some towns. I'm sure these are all over the country, but it's new that these are going in, that there are now these exercise parks going out with outdoor exercise equipment that you can go work out outdoors uh, and, and do like the beautiful things that you're seeing in Europe for outdoor sports parks. We have those, not as many as Europe by any stretch, but they're just starting to go in. So it's a, it's a new thing, but that definitely exists here. But as far as recreational parks, I, I think they exist the same as anywhere else. Again, just, you can't be in a colonial center where you can't build things and expect to come across them. All right. Number five, when the rainy season begins, be prepared that you are constantly be eaten by terrible bloodsuckers. Locals call them hehenes. They like mosquitoes, but you can't see them. They are invisible. They are terrible. I used five tubes of mosquito repellent in three months. Um, I'm not sure uh, what's causing these here in Leon. Um, it's the rainy season now, and I'm uh, not not aware of what this is. Um, I use uh, about one day a month. I find that I, I use mosquito, mosquito repellent, um, but just a quick spray. And it's always because I'm heading to the beach. Uh, and and really never because I'm in Leon. So you guys see me outside, never with repellent. Um, you see me, I have my outdoor meetings every day. Uh, once or twice, tops a month, I will use repellent. Extremely, extremely rare. I've definitely gone many months without it at all. It's the rainy season now, and, and I there are like gnats, um, but as far as, as these things, I've lived in Leon for three years, and um, I'm not familiar uh, with anything biting us more. The mosquitoes, Yes, they exist kind of in a steady state, some, but not a ton. Um, but uh, not sure what these are, so I can't answer that. Uh, food. I didn't really like the local food. Uh, a lot of people say this, and I've done some episodes about food. You really do have to be prepared for um, that it's a bit different, and it's very plain. And, and I have not pointed this out, but he does. Uh, it's also very greasy. Uh, he, he says pinto de gallo, but what he means is gallo pinto, which is the painted rooster. Um, would not uh, Pinto de Gallo would be a picture, uh, a painting of a rooster. Um, I remember for the rest of my life, I'm probably done with rice forever. A lot of people come here, and it's one of their favorite things. We uh, So locals in Nicaragua eat it like every day. While filming this episode, I got a hankering for Gallo Pinto, so I ordered some from my kitchen. And so this is a big helping of Gallo Pinto. You can see delicious rice and beans with seasonings, onions, uh, and so forth. So in case you've not seen it, this is the most common food of Nicaragua. Often for more than one meal. Um, it is something that a lot of people crave when they leave Nicaragua and can't get it other places. Definitely uh, when I left in 2015, it's something that we sought out and would, would try to find. Um, 
Now, this is self-selecting, right? But if people who decide to stay in Nicaragua, typically people love it. Um, and I do, my wife does, uh, my daughter does, my other daughter will eat it. She doesn't love it, but she's, she's fine with it. Um, but it's, I, I've met very few people uh, who don't at least uh, like it and find it just like, okay. Um, but that people absolutely love it is very common. Uh, and it's, and it is available everywhere. If it's, if rice and beans are not going to be something that you could ever like, even if it's seasoned differently, cause it is, it is a very specific thing, then you're going to have some, some l lack of variety here, right? Um, Nicaraguans eat very much the same thing all the time. Um, but, uh, it, it, but it is, it is extremely good if you like rice and beans, right? Uh, number six, prices. The country is not cheap unless all you want to eat is rice and beans. The variety of food in supermarkets is very limited. The yuca and bananas only cost next to nothing. Um, I, I don't feel like this is true. Like we eat here, it's cheaper than anywhere else in the region. Uh, as far as I know, it is far cheaper than the US as long as you're not importing food. But if you want beef, pork, chicken, fish, all those things are either the cheapest or really competitive um, in, in price, uh, range of fruit, limes, uh, bitter orange, um, bananas, oh, he did mention bananas, plantains, um, you know, we have a, a huge variety of fruits and veg that are uh, extremely available here. Uh, now, if you want exotic things, if you want North American foods, yeah, they have to be imported from North America. You can't get lemons, super hard. Um, I've never seen them in a grocery store. I know some places import them, but super hard. Um, some things have to be grown in um, special conditions. So if you're looking for those things, yes, the price is gonna be high. But as far as the foods that are eaten here, which does have a bit of variety, uh, it, is, it is widely available um, and very, very cheap. Like cheese here, super cheap. Um, tortillas, very cheap, corn and, and all those things. Uh, so there, there is actually a bit of variety. It's not as much as we're used to in North America, um, but the country is cheap. The thing that's different is that um, when evaluating uh, other countries, if you're evaluating, say, if you're an American and you're evaluating a Mexico, most of the food in the United States can be produced in Mexico, and much of the food in the United States is produced in Mexico, right? Mexico is a source of American produce avocados, for example. And that's something he doesn't mention. Like avocados here are like free, right? Coconuts here are like free. I mean, literally we get avocados and coconuts and ca like cashews, super cheap um, compared to other places, right? They're, they're still a little bit pricey, but they're really cheap compared to other places because uh, all these things are produced here. Uh, guava, papaya, right? Really, really cheap and very high quality, but not everyone likes those things. So that's a problem. Now, if you want apples, those are brought in from another place. They get very expensive. Um, but, uh, oh, he mentions that apples are made, or, made of gold, of course, because you're importing North American food. Like, why would you even compare that if you're looking, right? So if you're looking at Mexico, apples are, are grown in Mexico. American food is easily available in Mexico. Um, so you're, you're comparing the same food that you're used to in North America. If you're coming to Nicaragua, then the cost of food from North America is going to be high, but the cost of food in Nicaragua is cheaper than the U.S. or Mexico. If you were to go to the U.S. or Mexico and try to eat Nicaraguan, you would notice that the prices are really high. If you're trying to get the bananas or the papayas, stuff coming from here up there is really expensive as well. And so it's um, if you're comparing your diet Right, and this is the, the person who had the, the, the failed experience, that he, the, the, the single guy who came down and we did a video about recently. The thing was he didn't want to adapt to Nicaragua. He wanted to replicate his lifestyle from somewhere in Asia actually and uh, was unwilling to make any changes to anything pretty much. And uh, that made it seemingly quite expensive to him. But if you were to equate the lifestyle, right, figure out what local foods you want to eat, adjust to, right, you can't have turkey, you have to have chicken. You can't have, I don't know what meats people, you can't get bison, you have to have beef, right? Like what's available, but what's available here is very high quality at very low price. Um, so if you're doing a relative, what does it cost to live there adjusting for what, how people live? Nicaragua is super cheap. If you're trying to compare importing a lifestyle that was not imported somewhere else, then anywhere is gonna be expensive, right? You can't go anywhere in the world and import your life, literally import, not just as a figure of speech, but actually importing everything from the United States, 
nothing's going to be more expensive because it's the most expensive place to produce, most expensive place to, to export from. Um, so it's going to be a lot. Uh, he says potatoes and even onions are expensive. Um, I've not experienced that, but they may be a little bit higher. Uh, forget about kale and chard. If you're a vegetarian, they don't know what it is. Of course, it doesn't grow here. Um, you may get extremely lucky and buy bad quality broccoli at the supermarket a couple times in a month. Bottom line, the food chain is very limited. He's correct. The, bottom, the, the, the food chain is limited um, and broccoli. We do get good broccoli from time to time. We also get bad broccoli. Uh, it is uh, pretty limited in the, in the grocery stores here in Leon. If you're in Managua, I don't think you'll have any problems with a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, this is a remote, non uh, touristy city, so the locals are not, are not trying to get that stuff. But it's important to note if you are if you want these things, and don't we all? Um, uh, you're you're either going to be going to Managua to get them, which is what we mostly do, right? It's important to remember that most of us who live here in Leon, once you live here, we've established supply chains from Managua, and so there's a lot of stuff that may seem like oh you can't get it here, but it's it's you haven't you didn't stay long enough, uh, or or work in such a way to experience what we do as a regular matter of course. Once you realize that the grocery stores in Managua have a ton of stuff, that you can get cheaper prices, that it's only two hours away, that you can have someone run and get it for you, that there's a lot of ways, a lot of, not everyone, it's not for everyone, and it's, it's you know, there are negatives to it. You mean once a month I gotta run to the capital? I have to go two hours? I grew up in the United States, right? We had to go two hours to get groceries as it was growing up in New York. Not very, like a little bit less, but pretty close. It, so these things here to me are like, that's not even a distance. Um, but to someone who grew up in a big city and had access to everything, these things are annoyingly far and, and completely out of the question. So your perspective may be very different. Um, when I lived in Texas, right? So often people here are like, everything's so far away. It takes so long to get everywhere. But I can go from here in Nicaragua to my family's house in Houston as quickly as I could do it living in Texas, right? <laughs> so uh, relative, right? Um, in general, food is not such a big deal, but everything else costs way more than where you came from. Talking of personal care things, household items, etc. Um, I've not found that. Uh, some things are definitely more, but in general, we're not finding um, those higher prices. Uh, I personally got fed up with rum and local beer in about two months. Like, I don't want to hear about rice and beans anymore. The same thing about rum. Uh, it's true. Nicaragua is predominantly rum and beer. It's what people drink, right? That's the cultural thing. Just like if you move to France, people drink wine all the time. Um, then here it's, it's rum and beer. They're the equivalent to French wine. Uh, I'm a wine person. That does make Nicaragua kind of tough. I mean, we have okay wine. It's not from here, right? We just import it. Uh, in Nicaragua, a shitty wine costs a fortune. Uh, the same applies to good whiskey. Forget about cognac. Um, whiskey you can't get here at all. Like, you, you specialty import. Um, but cognac is, is available in the grocery store. Uh, I can't live without a daily glass of good wine, and I'm used to a good one at $4 a bottle, so that quality of wine would be $40 in Nicaragua. Um, I've never bought wine above, like, $8 here in Nicaragua. I get, like, you could spend more, but... Even just going to Super Express and grabbing decent Argentinian and Chilean wines and Portuguese a little bit and Spanish for sure. Um, you know, I'm used to living in Spain, so it was like two, three dollars a bottle for really good wine. Uh, but it's not, we're not paying 40, I don't know. Uh, I don't know anyone paying those kinds of prices for wine. Um, trash, trash in this country is everywhere. I mean it. He's talking about the litter. Uh, just arriving in Managua, you see mountains of garbage. It's so hard to deal with. I personally can't live with so much trash around me. Um... Yeah, I mean, the, the litter's big, right? We talked about it on the live stream. Um, by the time you guys are seeing this, probably two or three weeks ago, it's real, right? The, the culture of littering, it's like the U.S. in the 70s. Um, for, for me, having grown up in the 70s, it feels normal, right? Uh, and you get used to it really quick. I hate it, absolutely hate it. But it, it, I, don't, uh, I don't have that reaction because I grew up in the U.S. in the 70s. It was so normal that that's just my childhood. Um, it's almost nostalgic. It's a terrible way to be nostalgic, but that's kind of how it feels, honestly. Um, uh, but it's, uh, it's something that is improving. For the first time, finally, the country is able to overcome um, having been an occupied uh, colony and is finally, you know, because it takes a long time to, to get over those things, uh, and finally the economy is on track and, and many, many, many um, government programs are in place. Um, 
and and you're seeing suddenly suddenly the signs for trash are popping up. I saw a new one yesterday. Uh, suddenly there's fines being levied. Suddenly people are taking action, and and like every bus has trash cans on it. The culture is changing, but it's going to take a long time, just like it did any everywhere, right? But it is happening. So he's completely true. There's a lot of negative um, of of the trash and uh, uh, and the litter, but there are also things that if you Depending on where you live, it won't be an issue, right? There are whole cities of Nicaragua that don't have any. Boaco, Huigalpa, Nagarote, never see litter, right? Matagalpa, barely see litter. Um, down here in Leon, we're the, we're the litter city, right? We're like one of the worst. Managua, pretty bad, right? So if you're in those areas, it's going to be a ton. But if you go other places, it be almost none. So it's really easy to, to get away from it if it's something that you can't face. And if you live outside a city center, you have pretty decent ability um, uh, to affect the area around you. You could, someone, I was talking to someone yesterday, there was just, or two days ago, there's like, Let's just hire a local kid to go around and clean it all up. <laughs> like that's a great job, very cost effective, and you can make a huge difference. You're not just making it better for you; you can impact other people. There are options, right? That's one of the things about Nicaragua is that if you're trying to do good things, there's almost always a way that you can make it happen. But I think he's right. You know, universally, mountains of trash are the most noticeable, most impactful thing. And I think the government's understanding this: that nothing is impacting um, in a reasonable way, right? <laughs> Obviously, physical location climate, there's some things that you just can't alter, right? And people may like them and may not. But when it comes to things that you potentially can impact, nothing discourages tourism and nothing discourages uh, relocation into the country, immigration, more than the litter and trash issues. And the trash they have pretty much handled, right? From a pure trash perspective, there really aren't that big of problems. There's getting individual people to be more diligent about keeping dogs from getting into their trash. Uh, put your food out, let the dogs eat that, put your paper trash and stuff into something that'll be collected. But there's really good municipal collections, there's good handling of all that. That's handled. They've got that. They've got crews doing it. They have people that go door to door collecting recyclables. There's people that go around and clean up the streets and the cities like they really do. It's uh, the littering is so extreme that it creates a situation that feels like a trash problem, but it really is almost entirely a litter problem. Um, and, and that one's nearly insurmountable. Uh, it feels like. But the United States dealt with this in the 70s from exactly the same position. Um, so we, we're, we're hopeful that we're going to be able to do it here, uh, but it will take time. Um, and, and people need to kind of get this, you know, emotional feeling like, yeah, we want to make Nicaragua proud by not throwing trash out the bus window. Right. Uh, well, these are a few moments I wanted to point out why Nicaragua, Nicaragua is not a country for me. There is more dimension, positive things and negative ones, but that would take too much time. I'm not a blogger or YouTuber. Dear Scott, you're doing a very good work. You may not agree with some that I wrote, except my apologies for that. It's my personal opinion. I don't mean to influence anybody, but it's important to get these personal opinions. What are the things that are impacting people? Right. What are the things that you feel are impacting you? How could you have known ahead of time as well, which is important you know, for people who are looking at this, like Mike? Could you evaluate temperature, litter, some of these things before you come? Maybe. Right? Can you? Oh, I couldn't live around litter. You might be able to rule out Nicaragua before you come. Well, I could. I could live with it as long as I can make an impact. Okay, then that is a thing to know. Is is you know, eighty four degree days going to be something that that truly drives you mad? And I mean, like some people, it would drive to madness, right? And others will be like eighty four. That sounds like heaven, right? Evaluate that ahead of time so that. You have limited time in your life, and you're only going to get to evaluate so many different places, which is why we did spot checks, right? We jumped around different places in Europe. We jumped around different places in Latin America. We ruled some places out because of weather, because of transport time, because of uh, cost of living, right? We, we ruled things out, right? Why was, why was Chile not a good long-term uh, option for us? We didn't have to go there to know that the flight time home was really long and that the cost of living wasn't super competitive. I'm sure we would love Chile otherwise, right? It's a place that I really want to go and visit. I want to explore extensively. I want to do so much down there, but I, I know that for my family, it just doesn't make sense, at least not at this time and not for the last decades. So some things we're able to do simple research. And likewise, Cambodia, Laos, they seem really nice, right? And not to say that Thailand and Vietnam don't, right? That whole region seems very, very plausible. But again, really far from home and the time zones are not very conducive to our lives. So there's things we're able to do to rule them out. And I think anyone, no matter where you're looking, Nicaragua is an example, right? But you should be looking at some of these things that you can determine before you do scouting and rule out, no matter how beautiful you think Nicaragua is, no matter how much my show makes it seem like it's got just so much going for it, and it does, but there may be things that just don't work for you, and sure, come spend a vacation here, 
come at the right time and get a place with air conditioning and, and stay in a town without the trash problems and, and great. But if you're looking at a place to relocate and you're in this process of making those decisions, and Mike may fall in the middle. Yeah, I kind of wanted to check it out, kind of wanted to make a vacation out of it. Hey, split the difference, right? That's fine. If you've got the time and it's something you want to do, I'm not going to tell you that's a bad thing to do. That's great. Just if you're really just putting in the effort like we did to make decisions, we knew that Spain and Italy and Greece and Ukraine and Romania and Panama and Nicaragua are all places that we seriously were going to look at both themselves and their neighboring countries. So we were using them as a basis for exploring a greater region. For example, Moldova is a place that we might have considered, but we stayed in Romania instead of Moldova and we learned enough about Moldova and visited Moldova while we were there that we were able to make reasonable determinations about whether it was a place that would work for us or not based on what we knew. Uh, so we, and you get a bit of this, right? Living in Nicaragua, as an example, will tell you a bit about Honduras and El Salvador, just like living in Panama told us a lot about Costa Rica. Uh, so we didn't have to go to each individual country to know that like the region is really good for us, right? We got regional information and then honed in, and that's kind of a good way to go. So um, do these things quickly to get to a point where you're, you're able to reduce the cone of uncertainty for your relocation and make really good decisions using the time that you have available to you. Mike says, you are absolutely right that it is necessary to first come and live in a country for some time before making a decision to move. Sincerely, Mike. Well, thanks, Mike. That was a good write-up and a good bit of, of what affects you and, and things that people need to think about, right? Do you want to live? Uh, outdoors at these temperatures? Do you want to live with AC full-time? Some people are like, but I already do that, right? Um, now, one of my questions, of course, is where are you able to live that doesn't have these problems for large portions of the year? I needed a lot more AC. Literally, I needed full-time AC to live in Texas uh, in, in cities that are listed as much cooler than here. Um, or when it wasn't, I had to air condition like nine months of the year, had a few weeks where we'd have the windows open, and then we had to do heat uh, or, the, or the pipes would freeze and it would be just a disaster. It was terrible. So we always had high electric bills. We always had to do it. Like there was never an escape from it. Uh, it was, it, it made it that you couldn't go outside. Here we're out, in and out all the time. It's one of the reasons why we don't air condition the house because we're outside all the time. If the amount that we go in and out, it just wouldn't be practical to, to air condition um, all the time or even have fans because I'm always moving. Like I can't be in front of a fan and I don't have a fan in my office. Uh, so it's, uh, it's good to think about how these things will impact you, but be realistic. Right. Once you've adjusted, might this be better for me, even though New York and Texas are hotter part of the year and colder part of the year and on average colder. Now that I've adjusted to here, this is wildly more pleasant than any place I've ever lived in the United States and more pleasant than any place I lived in Europe. Now, at the time that I lived in Europe, the temperatures were much more mild. Now that they have become so extreme, for those who don't know, the traditional mild Europe of my childhood is gone. Their summers used to be topping out for like in the Mediterranean, used to top out in the low 80s. The degree to which Mediterranean Europe and Northern Europe was insanely mild was, was hard to describe. And when I first started going to Europe, it still had quite a bit of that. And our early time there was so nice. But by the time we were there shooting uh, Take Flight with Scott, my other channel, in 2019, the beginning of the new weather pattern had arrived. And now summers in Europe are so unbearably hot, but the cities aren't built for it because they went through millennia of mild temperatures. And now that they have extremely hot summers, they have to be in air conditioning. Like people are expiring. Here in Nicaragua, you never need air conditioning. Uh, you may really want it, but you're never in such heat that it is a risk to life. But in Europe, it is now common that the heat is so high that it's much like the United States. The United States has always had high heats where it's a risk to life in much of the country because it's just farther south, more desert, like it gets hotter. Uh, Europe traditionally didn't have to worry about these things. It's so far north, it's so wooded, it's so mountainous, they just didn't have to worry about it. And now they do. Suddenly temperatures above 100 degrees can hit regularly, Nothing is built to accommodate cooling off like that. And so their, their uh, whole worldview has changed dramatically as far as climate and the, the dreamy situation of a Europe that just never got super cold and never got warm at all. And you could wear, you know, dressy clothes and fancy clothes 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, because you never had to worry about getting sweaty. You never had to worry about, you know, trudging through the snow, at least in a lot of Europe. Of course, Northeastern Europe gets 
a lot of snow and a lot of cold in the Nordic countries, right? You still have the snow. But there was so much of Europe, the Italys, the Portugals, the Spains, the Greeces, that never, ever faced hot days. You were so pleasant all the time. And it's what made, you know, stories of Europe and movies of Europe just look so fantastic. And even Rick Steves, who made so many travel shows so recently, that Europe no longer exist. You can still make it in the shoulder seasons. You still have windows of amazing weather, but that year round, absolutely perfect mild temperatures are gone there. And so uh, the number of places in the world where you get, honestly, the mild temperatures of Nicaragua, and we're the worst of the region, right? Everyone around us has even more mild because it's the same steady year round, but slightly cooler. This is one of the best regions. It's very difficult to compete with this uh, because we kind of have the perfect mix of things. So uh, it's, it's something to very carefully consider because we kind of have this unique advantage of the opportunity for you to actually adjust to it. That's not something you get a lot of places. So it's worth considering. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Miller. And as always, I'll see all of you tomorrow.